Welcome back everybody more to archery. Today is the day. Dennis Wong. No, you saw the photos. Don't have to say anything. You all know what you can expect now. And thank you again very much, Dennis. It's, well, I feel so honored. And I don't want to break something here in pieces. Please check behind for the bowstring. This is the behind. There's the bowstring. And now, look at the bowstring, and there's even a knocking guide in the middle. This is the bowstring. Don't even know where to put it now. That don't lose it. I put it there. So, and then let's see what we else have here. Maybe on the other side, neither here, it's in between this sandwich, okay. So, -hoo -hoo. <laughs> yes. Dennis, you are a crazy man. Wow, so first of all, what you sent me is a high grow meter, because Humidity where you should use this bow is between 50 and 80. So when it's too dry, then you should not use it. And when it's too high, you should not use it. This is the box I got from Dennis. So what we get first here are these, I don't know what the name is, but they help you stringing the bow. Then he made some, oh, even with nails on the front, some really pretty arrows, FOC, oh, look, even FOC, perfect. Dennis, you are really an insane person, look. Three times fledged with whipping. Wow, <laughs> and metal tips on it, yeah. I thought I'd bring my carbon arrows just in case. Wow, alone these are so pretty. Look at that. So, we have three arrows, but the main thing, why you all like my photos so much, I'm so excited now, is this little guy here. Oh, this is insane. This is insane, look at this. Wood, sinew, Horn. And the horn has a concave shape to it, like it's supposed to be. We have here the section where the two pieces of horn intersect. There is his name written. Holy cow, what a pretty bow. So, one can tell it's a Turkish style, Ottoman style bow. Wow. And it's a real, ooh, and it's a powerful one. Look at this bow. So the, the only thing is now, of course, he sent it unstrung. So it might take now some time to string it and fix all the irregularities. Wow, this is a pretty bow. But of course, we have to do what we always do. I got carried away, so back to business. Of course, what we have here is a length from knock to knock. Fourteen, yeah, let's say it's almost fifteen. Fourteen three quarter, but I give it fifteen inches. The length from knock to knock. Wow. And it's a strong bow. Wow. So I tried to string it now without anything. I used now the knee method for it, but you see now already bow is completely out of alignment. And this is now the thing which takes a while because you really need to twist the limbs 
in the opposite direction of where they go off, like you usually do. But with this boy it can take a while until it really gets into shape. So bear with me when it takes a while. Sometimes it can be enough to hold it for a few seconds but sometimes you really need to clamp the bow down for half an hour in this position that it gets the shapes and this is a natural material it's what you get so only as a size comparison I brought you, you know, the mini bow from Ali bow in fiberglass <laughs> and this is the bow from Dennis you see that quite a bit shorter for the rest now you see that the bow is straight almost so at least straight enough for me today this bow has no string patches and the knots really end there where the horn ends cool brace side you want to know of course me too bow has a brace side of two and a half inches smidge more than two and a half inches so and the second thing is now once you have it straight the second thing is that you check the tiller and you see that the bow is here this part is a little weaker than this part so you need to adjust this one you can do this now again putting here a rubber band around and leave it there for a while until it gets used to it and until it gets into the proper shape can take a while I said so Dennis told me a few minutes up to half an hour or something natural material you need to work with it you can't work against it, it takes its time so here <laughs> I said takes a while such a pretty boat uh, let's see if we get it back a little here. That here, the tiller is the same. Uh, now it looks good. See, now even here the angles come close, so it's not bad at all. It's, it's a well made bow, and he really knows what he's doing. Even the handle, slightly, uh, slightly, slightly bulge here. Wow. Insane, but you know. I consider this a three finger bow like Ali Bow's tiny bow. Moment of truth. <laughs> Look at this, even the sun comes out. Uh -huh. Is this a bow? But of course, you see that this limb is bending a little easier, so we are still not done yet with adjusting. And it's a horn bow, so you always need to fix it again. So it's not a piece of plastic. You do it once and it works. It takes a while. So that's it, but it's maybe not perfect, but it's good for now. So humidity is still 65%, so just fine. And I guess we shoot this directly Ottoman style. Of course you don't shoot thumb release, we have a small knock here on the arrow. I would say that we should pinch draw, but I have no idea what will happen now. Let's see. This is max draw. <laughs> oh, oh, I have no idea how much this bow costs, but guys, for your office, for at home, you need one of these ones. Side cutter comes good. And the sound it makes is insane. Need to come a little closer to the microphone that you hear it. <laughs> it's like the casing buttons more. Holy crap. Nice. So, and of course the tiller is still not there. So we hold it a little in place. My group. And these arrows do quite well, so. so. 
Holy moly, that's fun. So we check it, it got now a little here out of shape again. Uh oh, so you really... It's nothing for fun, nothing for kids. It really, you need to know what to do. Check it again after you shoot. Straighten it again. Of course, when you straighten it properly, then it lasts a little longer. But for the purpose of the video, we don't have that time. So you simply look at this. Then you simply bend it the opposite side of where it is out of alignment. Hold it for a few seconds. Then check. It's straight. The bow overall is now not straight. So you really, then you need to clamp it down on the flat surface and make sure that the bow is straight. But we shoot now quickly three more arrows and then we go from there. So. It's insane. And these arrows are awesome. Dennis, these arrows are simply awesome. So I look at that. Yeah. I think I can do Lars Anderson style too. Maybe not with these knocks, but we get there. <laughs> look at this and the group. But this is part of your meditation process in the office. You know, first get this bow in shape. Again here, this is the weak part. Hold it the opposite side for a few seconds. Drop it, and it should be fine for another three. So now we see, now we are at three meter distance. And when you compare, this is scale what did I say, 15 inches, a normal bow like this has, let's say, roughly 50 or 55 or even 60, so it's roughly 1 to 4, 1 to 5 scale. So when I shoot now 3 meters, that means already it's 12 to 15 meters. So, let's see. Ooh. Yeah. And yeah, you need to get the feeling for it. It's not the most forgiving. Draw experience is really nice. Wiggle test, of course, this bow will not get the best wiggle result because, but for the size, it's, 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 qu it's quite sturdy. So you only need to check that it's really aligned. And now you see again, it starts bending a little. So you need to bend it back. So now let's talk business. We saw that the bow's draw length, uh, the bow's length is 15 inches and I could draw it up to the beginning of the thread and this is what even Dennis mentioned as the max draw. And this is seven and three quarters and the bow length is 15. So you have it, it's a 0 0.5 F value. And now we check. We check because we do it scientific here. Yeah? Eight pounds, eight pounds at full draw, and the arrow's weight is, and an arrow weighs 38 grain. Eighty-two, okay. We need to check it again because it starts flexing. 81. Yeah. So, 80 foot per second. Yeah. 1 or the more arrows. I lost already one under my shed because I shoot in the other direction because of the light. And now this arrow slid under my shed. I hope I will find it. We're still at 81, 78. Ah, now we get some readings. Good. Okay, so but you see what you get. 
course, tiller is already out again. After a few shots, you always need to check is everything still aligned. And even there now, so we shoot one more time. Throw experience is really nice. You have no hand shock. The only thing is these feathers sometimes stretch, scratch my thumb. But that's me. No, they didn't. So it's roughly 80 foot per second for a teeny tiny toy bow, a real composite bow. It's an awesome bow, of course you need to know, but you get to know what it means to own a real horn senior bow. They take a lot of, they need a lot of attention. And you always need to check again, is the tiller correct? Is the bow still straight? And now you see already that the bow is totally not straight anymore. So you need to bend it back again, get it in shape, hold it for a few seconds, minutes, sometimes even a little more, until you get there again. Uh, it's still out of, quite out of tiller yeah, here. Now it's the handle part. So, but everything is doable and fixable with a bow like this. You only need to know what you're doing. So, <laughs> that's a fun shooter, I tell you guys. You all need to order one. I have no idea how much a bow like this costs, but when I see the detail and the time, I think you spend the same amount of time with a small bow like you spend with a real size bow. So I would not be surprised if the price is, I, don't, I have no idea what the price is. So simply write, I put you the Facebook contact of Dennis in the description. But this is a wow, a really wow bow. Look at this. Hmm. Katra comes already naturally, and I said it's a two to three finger. I prefer three finger because then I can perform side down Katra. Of course, it's me. See? Side down Katra. Works quite well. And I already get quite accurate with it. So it's, it's a good bow. It's a <laughs> Look at this. Eww. And the sound of it. Awesome. <laughs> Distance one and a half meters. <laughs> so, but now the real question is can we? Oh, that's tough. That's tough because you need, on the other hand, uh, it's, it's not easy. And the knock is really small, but almost Lars Andersen style fast shooting. Wow. I'm more than impressed of this bow. 80 foot per second with 38 grain arrows. I will tell you now what the grain per pound will be and everything max draw seven and three quarter overall length from knock to knock roughly 15 inches price I have no idea very lightweight looks awesome so you can leave it strong but then it will lose its power so it's always better to unstring this bow of course you always check again that the tiller gets in the right position again. But this is what you always need to do. But for this you have a real horn senior bow and then you check here again. Looks like a banana again, so you bend it backwards. So this is what you always have to do. You shoot two, three arrows and then you check again. That's important. But such a pretty bow and I'm not even sure if I can do close-ups because I can't I don't have a micro lens <laughs> that I can get so close. It looks awesome, but even unstrung. Let me unstring it quickly. Stringing, unstringing like this, see? I put it here, 
just above my knees and then I press down here like this and then I can put the string off and in the same way I string the bow. I'm not sure if this is the correct way, most probably not, but it works for me and I bend both of them in the same way without twisting them or something, you see that? And string is not so tough, of course, you need to adjust everything again and then unstringing. You come here, press down with your thumb and put the string off. You have the beauty here unstrung and you see already here looks almost like a dent now. But you see, when you make it now straight, it stays straight. So this is simply a little weak spot. You see here even a small, small uh, cracks. And here you can bend it back so you have a little string follow, because it's natural material. But, so, and then you build a nice stand for the office where you put the bow in like this. And the three arrows, whatever, underneath or something, then you have this really as a looks awesome on your office desk or wherever you are. As an inspiration, when you need it, you still can take it, use a small cardboard target or something, and do your daily zen. Awesome. Dennis, thank you so, 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 so much for sending me this, it's really, and you did a great job with putting a nail there, so you have now really the FOC of the arrows is working. Incredible, your skills are outstanding, incredible. And I'm so happy that you really sent this bow to me. This is definitely a keeper. It's awesome, here even the Last time one of my Turkish YouTube uh, subscribers told me yeah, you should not tr call this a seer because in Turkey this is the Bash and the Kazan and we have, of course, everybody names it different but when you say from an Asiatic reflex bow the seer, everybody knows that you mean the ear and the ear starts from here and goes to here. Of course, this is still the seer, this part is the head, it's the Bash, this is the Kazan we know that, but it's only then for the Turkish bows and others name it differently. But when I say seer, then everybody knows this is a non-bending section of an Asiatic bow. That's all. Such a pretty bow. I can't... Wow. It's like Christmas and, and Easter and my birthday all in one day. Thank you so much, Dennis. Thank you very much for watching, guys. See you and that's all you have. Fits almost in your pocket. <laughs> Insane. Insane. I need to put it down and I need to calm down now, otherwise. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.